So I'm here tonight with Jordan Prince Wright, and he is the director and producer of Before Dawn. We've just been at the Revelation Perth International Film Festival and watched the feature documentary In the Trenches. Jordan, tell us a little bit about yourself. As you mentioned, film producer and director. Those that know me well know that I grew up watching Yael Brenner, Steve McQueen, and John Wayne. So I was born in the wrong era, and I've always, uh, yeah, I've always loved uh, making films. Like I ran around when I was uh, back here, yeah, back in like primary school. I was running around with a camera doing you know videoing and and making all sorts of short films in high school and yeah I feel incredibly privileged that I'm able to continue doing what I'm doing now which is making Australian stories and bringing them to the big screen. As a high school teacher myself I'm pretty stoked to see that you know a guy from Swan Christian College has come out and you know produce what you have. How do you think your what you learnt at school has impacted what you've done today? I was very lucky with my teachers that they were like, you know, they teach you what you needed to learn on the curriculum, but then they would go, go out and make stuff. Because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you can only be taught so much where you've actually got to go out and make productions, produce things, make mistakes, because it's from those mistakes that you then learn. And I mean, the fact that I was able to treat every short film as a opportunity to make mistakes was great because then when I actually made feature films, making a mistake, you could foresee it mm-hmm. and not actually make that mistake because a mistake on a feature film could cost ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars <laughs> Where on a short film, it's like, oh, that costs 50 bucks, who cares? I mean, Swan was fantastic. You know, the media department there was great. And I still remember when I was 13, uh, jumping up and down because I really wanted to use a particular crane dolly, but that was only reserved for year 12 students and I was year right and then I got to use it and then after that the teachers never questioned it after that point and now I'll go out and use you know get to have crew on set that are using equipment hundreds and thousands worth of dollars (laughs) but yeah it's it's for me it's just being able to say that yeah I've been able to do what I love doing and been able to do that since high school and being able to have those that support in fact the premiere night which was a massive premiere australia's largest premiere mm. and having a lot of family and friends there was great but actually all the media teachers rocked yeah. up so seeing them there uh one of them he was actually he's actually now in canada he flew back from canada and yeah he was there at the night so yeah it's incredible having that support still and i mean they say i love a sunburnt country and a land yeah. of sweeping plains you've seen a lot of wa um do you think you have a favorite spot that you've just driven through in western Australia? No, (laughs) I love all WA. I mean, with uh, the decadent and depraved, my previous feature, I still remember driving through a certain part of, uh, it was in Mininew actually, and the sun was shining on these hills. And it was almost in a way where like, I got to film there because it was very picturesque. But then you go down to Esperance. And the one thing that I love with what Ben's done with the documentary in the trenches is he's captured how beautiful Esperance is with the sunsets, which we couldn't do with before dawn because we're replicating the western front where it had to be overcast and muddy and rainy and all that so you know you have that and then you go up north the kimberley area love you know love the kimberley i'm working with them closely on the next one uh and then also the midwest region which i've shot in yalgu q sandstone leonora um what's interesting is so actually working with all those shires so i remember many years ago when i said yep we're going to go out we're going to do this independently i went to all the shires went to sponsors we kind of passed away for another way of filmmaking and it's you know it's quite humbling uh, to see other filmmakers doing a similar sort of thing now as well going hey you know if if we don't get funding the usual way we can go to sponsors or we can go to shires directly and having those partnerships with various shires across Australia has been really good because you go to that area and go, oh, wow, this is the tourist location. But then the locals go, actually, let's let's take you here because this is a special place that people don't know about. And then going, okay, yeah, how do I film here? It's incredible. But at times it can be a bit of a logistical nightmare because of what WA is like. It's so vast. But... Yeah, I love filming here in WA and I'm excited with the next production as it is, you know, I've kind of been putting my foot down going, no, no, we have to film in WA, we have to film here. And I bet the locals love it too. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how important would you say those recce's are prior to actually picking a location and then choosing to film there? Um, yeah, so for me, is it's, it's a couple things. So you need to have the support from the Shire. Um, that can be uh, both in kind, financial, etc. but there has to be that support there. There's got to be the support uh, from the locals. That's a huge, huge amount. So like if you start getting all the uh, Rotary Clubs and, um, you know, all the different communities on board. Uh, so if you've got that community, 
community support, you, you've won half the battle, the shire support, but then having the location. So you've got to be able to tick all three boxes. And if you tick all three boxes, you're on a winner. WA, as soon as you go into a town and you say, hey, yeah, I want to make a film here. And <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, we're actually community driven and it's for charity, et cetera. Then not only are they going, oh yeah, it's a film, but it's like, wow, there's actually more to us just making a film here. It's, and you know, with Before Dawn, true story it was about the Anzacs about the sacrifices of the men and women so everyone was already behind it but then when you started saying oh yeah this is an independent production there's companies across all of Australia that have got behind this communities and then you're saying yeah also we, we want to do this for charity we've got a telethon aspect as well and then people really go oh yeah okay we actually we want to get behind this yeah it's like I said humbling I guess is the best word to use and yeah, I feel incredibly pri privileged really that I get to do this. Oh, that's awesome. And in regards to being, I guess, a part of the documentary and being, you know, behind the camera itself, mm -hmm. what would, would you say that's really great from a personal reflection point of view? Like how, how does that, do you think that makes you a better producer, director? Yes, and uh, I guess like sitting there and watching it, it was really, it was interesting because there was parts of it I'm like, oh, I don't remember doing that, don't remember doing this. Um, and also makes me sit there and go, you know, I remember some points were really hard filming, but being able to sit there and go, wow, we actually did that, we went through that and I will never want to do that again is, you know, it's kind of like, yep, I don't want to go through that again. But at the same time, then you come out of that documentary going, actually, yeah, no, I do. I do want to do this again. I love it, you know. I don't want to see mud and sandbags again though. <laughs> um, but, you know, which is kind of like a running joke amongst the cast and crew because there were thousands of sandbags that we had to fill. But mm -hmm. it's been a, a bit of a whirlwind of a journey and I don't think that any of us really knew what we were in for. We didn't know what to expect. And, you know, uh, one of the actors only said to me tonight, he goes, you know, it was the hardest shoot, but it was the funnest shoot that he's ever done. And it was because it was the hardest, because every the worst things got, the closer everybody became. We were very much a tight-knit family by the end of it. And talking about family, your personal family seems to be quite a part of yeah. your your life in this industry. How much do you rely on their support or how much does it mean to you that you have their support? When we take on new crew, I mentioned that we're very much a family driven on set and they don't really get that kind of comprehension. And what I mean by that is that expect that we're going to have an argument and, and two seconds later we're best friends again. Mm -hmm. And that's almost, almost transcends from the fact that, yeah, my family is on set and my old man, dad, he's been fantastic. A lot of location scouting we did with him. Actually, yeah, he was yeah. in the trenches. Yeah. He was talking about it. Uh, we also uh, had him as an extra. In fact, one day one of the extras wasn't getting up that quickly and... Um, I was like, oh, that extra's taking forever to get up off the ground and run. You know, what's going on? And the uh, the assistant director said, you go over and tell that extra what to do. Of course, I walk over and there's daddy's, you know, clean shaven moustache hat on, didn't recognise. So then he goes, oh, well, I'm st he goes, because I'm an EP on this production, I'm making an executive decision and I'm starting halfway standing. So that's what he did. <laughs> but yeah, dad was fantastic through the whole project. My mum even came down. They ended up doing a, a sign in this, there's a shed. Because it was so much mud, we ended up having these massive bugs buckets, these troughs, which is what the washing was done in. Yeah, some of the crew did up a, like a World War One sign, but they called it Sue's Laundromat. So Sue's <laughs> my mum, and they put the sign up, Sue's Laundromat. So families, you know, even my sister's been very supportive. And so it's one of those things that when you've got that family supporting you, you then apply that on set. So when you are on set, you do kind of, you have that, yeah, I guess the best way to put it is that we are a family on set. We're very close knit. It can be quite odd for new crew members coming in because they're not used to that. They're not used to saying, oh, hang on, you're a different department. I can't help you. It's like, no, everyone helps each other. Also, it can be quite shocking too because those that don't know, dad and I, one minute I'll be telling him, oh, you know, drill a hole in. He's not drilling the right spot. So I'll be, that's wrong. And then he's, and then two seconds like, oh, that looked great, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks good. You know, and I still remember one crew member, one of the interns actually was going, you guys were just yelling at each other two seconds oh yeah don't worry about it you know it's yeah. all good so it's yeah it's really good to have a supportive family in regards to revelation film festival have you done anything yeah. before and or will you be doing something in the future previously worked on a lot of short films deck and deprave which was coined as australia's largest independent feature film and that just took off and then we've now made before dawn which is naturally even bigger again a thousand times bigger and now the next movie we've already got distribution lined up for across the world so before dawn is now uh, in cinemas all across europe hit cinemas july 19 in america and south america and that's canada etc as well so all those regions and the next film is like okay well how do we make this even bigger than before dawn it has to be a thousand times 
was bigger. I guess the best story there is that my safety officer, Lee Daniel, he, on one day on set, actually at the wrap, he walked up and he goes, oh, just think, Geordie, just think, you know, now that you've done Before Dawn, everything else will be really easy. And yeah. all the crew that have known me since high school like, yeah, you don't know Jordan. You know, the next one's going to be a lot bigger. It's yeah. going to be like, you know, it's not a curve like that. It's going to be a curve like that. Yeah, the next one is a thousand times bigger. International distribution are re-signed on. It's kind of going nuts. It's another true story. It's Australian with a lot of international connections. And that's all I can say at this stage. But yeah. stay tuned. Announcements are coming. And that's so exciting. And they say aim higher than high and you'll never yep. fall short. <laughs> and that is awesome. So, I mean, you're still so young. What are you, what are your dreams and goals for your future in this industry? Uh, for me, it's just uh, bite off more than you can chew and then chew like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of get asked, oh, where do you see yourself in five years, 10 years? I don't know. Yeah. You know, I'm just riding the wave. I'm just enjoying it. As long as I get to tell Australian stories that need to be told, like before dawn, it was an awareness piece and it had to be told. The next story, a lot of people know the story, but they don't really know the story. Mm. And if I'm able to tell stories like that and, you know, take audiences on an emotional journey, have audiences come out of that cinema either feeling happy, la you know, laughing, or like with Before Dawn, many of them came out crying. You know, I get to do what I love doing every day and that's making making movies and having audiences go to the cinema still. It's fantastic. Well, Jordan, you should be incredibly proud. What you've produced Thanks. is amazing and we are so excited to be able to watch your up and coming future. Thank you.